Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. And for today, we've got a lot to cover, including Marvel Legends X-Men, Donatello the Dark Turtle for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Princess Bride, and a whole lot more. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's jump into it. And first thing I just want to do is share some quick thoughts on the new He-Man and the Masters of the Universe series that premiered on Netflix this week. This is the second animated series that is, is airing on Netflix, different from the Kevin Smith one. And this one is definitely geared more for the kids. But surprisingly, I actually really enjoyed this series. It's 10 episodes. The first season is 10 episodes long. Each one's about 30 minutes. It is definitely geared for the kids, especially with like the animated uh, style of it, which is kind of a CGI type style. And then the action sequences are definitely geared more for kids. You know, each of the characters now have like signature type moves, you know, kind of like you would see in a game or such. So you can tell they're definitely trying to reach younger audiences with this one. But the overall story I actually felt was pretty well done. Very different from, you know, previous incarnations. This isn't uh, just retelling the same stuff we saw uh, in the original series or even the 2000X, though it has picked up, you know, it has seemingly picked up some elements from the 2000X series. Uh, things start out with uh, Keldor as opposed to Skeletor. And, you know, we definitely get origins of these characters with this series. It doesn't start off with He-Man being an established character or anything like that. So um, I actually, I, I was very surprised in how much I ended up liking this series. I'm not a huge fan of the overall designs. Um, the designs have not won me over, the character designs. But, you know, I'm okay with that. I, I get that they're geared more for the kids. They're trying to reach the kids with this. So as long as the story's good, I, I you know, I can handle the designs even if, you know, they're not my favorite. Now, as far as the toys go, I've talked about some of these toys before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But I just want to kind of recap some of the uh, core figures that are coming for the show. Some of these we just got brief looks at PowerCon last weekend. So we had seen previously like high-res images for the He-Man and Skeletor figures as, as well as Trapjaw and Man-at-Arms and, and uh, Tila, which is the sorceress in this uh, show, basically. Uh, there is an older, uh, essentially, sorceress in the show who, who goes by the name Eldris, who is really, I guess, more of a spirit. She really doesn't appear seem to appear in physical form, so... Um, you know, we might get a translucent version of that character down the road. Then at PowerCon, we had seen, uh, again, just briefly, uh, we saw our first look at the Orko figure, which is a robot in this series. And, you know, it's actually in the story, you know, explains why and everything, which, you know, I thought they did a pretty good job with. Um, same thing with, like, you know, characters like Trapjaw and Evelyn, who, you know, start out as Cronus and Evelyn. Um, they actually, you know, we, we see their origins, essentially. Um, again, same thing with Skeletor and, and Adam and such. So, again, I, I thought it was very interesting. And then, again, at PowerCon, we saw our first look at the Evil Inn figure. And then I suspect Beastman is in the series, and I suspect we will be getting a Beastman probably fairly soon. We've not seen that figure yet. Battle Cat, we haven't actually seen a Battle Cat figure yet for this series, but there has been uh, retail listings for what is just listed as a creature, which I'm thinking is probably Battle Cat. I can't imagine they're not going to do Battle Cat along with He-Man. Um, you know, for the toys, we've seen some funny things like motorcycles and stuff, which have not appeared in the show. They don't ride around on motorcycles. Uh, the vehicles are very different looking. There's like a Sky Sled and a Wind Raider, but they don't look like the classic Sky Sled or Wind Raider. But again, they're they're not riding around in, on motorcycles like we see with the toys. I think that's just for the toys and, and the kids. But again, if you haven't, if you've got Netflix and you haven't already, if you thought, well, it's just going to be for kids, it's going to be stupid. I'm not going to bother with it. Um, I, I I would you know suggest that maybe you rethink that and and, and check it out. Um, you might find yourself pleasantly surprised with it. Now switching gears to NECA toys. So just a, a quick couple of things. So first of all, a couple of figures that they announced last month during their virtual Comic-Con home event have gone up for pre-order just this week. Uh, in fact, just yesterday. So those Alien vs. Predator uh, movie deco figures, the set of three figures that they're doing, 
the razor claw, the arachnoid, and the chrysalis figure. Again, they showed these off last month, but these are now officially up for pre-order at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. As is that second figure from the Thing movie based on the RJ McReady figure, uh, the Kurt Russell character, this one with the flamethrower. This figure is also available for pre-order everywhere, including our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. I, if I remember correctly, it briefly went up for pre-order on Walmart's website last month. I don't know if the, that was an error or what. The, the listing was actually removed, but I don't know how many people actually pre-ordered it from there. But it is available everywhere. It's not a store exclusive. And again, this is the one with the flamethrower. And then finally on the NECA toy front for you guys today, we got our first look at the fourth Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Loot Crate figure. This is from the animated series. It's Donatello the Dark Turtle. So this is the only one that from, from the Loot Crate figures for this year that we had not seen yet. And definitely I think it looks really cool. It, you know, it's Donatello dressed essentially as like his version of Batman. Uh, you got the soft goods cape. The figure is going to have an interchangeable... Uh, uh, head with mouth that is compatible you can use the head with uh, if you've got those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in disguise turtle figures from the box set and um, the figures also got the soft goods cape and it's going to have a smoke bomb accessory so this figure should be shipping out sometime in November uh, the first figure the Danny figure from the movie is starting to ship out to folks now I got my shipping notification this week now one thing i want to know i'd seen some people saying that like loot crate was canceling their orders and and you know things like they were canceling all their loot crate turtle orders and stuff and that's not the case as i understand it uh they had a glitch in their system uh there was a stated cutoff date for these for when you could pre-order them and apparently the their system didn't shut things off at that date and some people uh put in orders after that date and so those are the orders, as I understand it, that are being canceled. Mezco this week put up for pre-order their 18-inch Godzilla figure. You may recall they gave us a teaser for this one last month, or actually back in July, for their Comic-Con, virtual Comic-Con at home event. The figure has around 10 points of articulation, light-up sounds and effects, and is slated for release in September of next year. The price on it is 450 bucks, and you can pre-order it now at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. Now switching gears to McFarland Toys. So this week, going up for pre-order were those 7-inch scale, the Princess Bride movie figures. So I talked about these briefly in the last video. We'd gotten a preview image last week for these, but now we've got the full official images. They are available for pre-order pretty much everywhere, including our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. There are four figures that they are releasing. They're releasing the Dread Pirate Roberts, which will come with a sword and a base. We are getting Montoya, which also comes with his sword and a base. Then we're getting Princess Buttercup in a red dress. And the dress itself is made with a soft goods material. And then finally, as a mega fig, is the Fezzik character, Andre the Giant. Now, I will be honest with you, the face likenesses, especially on the Fezzik figure, I don't think are terribly good. Uh, McFarlane definitely seems to kind of struggle with getting the likenesses on real live, you know, movie type characters. Uh, I don't know if it's because they don't use scanning technology or what, but, but, but definitely with that Fezzik, it, it, it does not look much like Andre the Giant. The Roberts, the Dread Pirate Roberts and the Montoya figure don't look too bad. Even the Buttercup, I think looks decent on this one, but, but that Fezzik, uh, Andre figure, uh, just that head sculpt to me. Just something seems off about it, but um, it is a mega figure, so it will be bigger than the others. You know, uh, Andre being a, a really big guy as he was in the movie, um, he he should tower over the other figures. And as I said, all four of these are available for pre-order now. And then if you've been holding off on getting those Suicide Squad movie figures, you now have an opportunity to order them as a box set. All four of the regular figures, as well as the King Shark Collect and Connect figure. So uh, really the, the regular figures are all the same, same weapons and accessories. This set is going to be sold exclusively on the McFarland Toys Store website. Um, but, but the figures themselves, the regular figures, all appear to be the same as the single releases. You might have thought they might include some guns with like Peacemaker and Bloodsport, being that you know they didn't include guns and I don't think are able to include guns with a regular retail release. But the, same weapons. 
Um, really, the only difference is with the King Shark figure, he has uh, blood in his mouth. So uh, this is the third version of King Shark that we've gotten because they did the regular Collect and Connect version. Then they did a gold label Walmart exclusive version. And then we get this one with the bloody mouth. But um, uh, again, this is a box set. So you have to get all five figures together. This will be released in December and the cost on it's $125. For you fans of the Back to the Future movies, we've got two new figures coming from Hot Toys. These two figures, once again, based on Marty and Doc Brown, but for these, this will be based on the third movie in their Western outfits. So with the Doc Brown figure, he's gonna come with that rifle with his homemade scoop, along with a pistol. He's gonna have a stop, the stopwatch that he had, the, the homemade walkie-talkie uh, with the big battery that he did, the little model that he made up for the DeLorean, and uh, a figure stand as well that you know things like the hat and the trench coat and such are removable on the figure so um if you want oh if you wanted a western version of doc brown this is your opportunity and then along with doc brown of course we're getting marty and marty as well will be in his western outfit he has the poncho he has the hat which are removable he has the gun belt which is removable along with the pistol He's got uh, things like the picture of them at the clock tower. He's got multiple pairs of hands. He also has a walkie talkie and they've also included the hoverboard that he brought with him from the future. Now these figures are gonna cost you around $285 each. They are sold separately and they are actually not gonna be released until March of 2023. So not next year, but the year after that. But both figures are available for pre-order now at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. Diamond Select Toys has another Cobra Kai figure that they're releasing for their 7-inch scale select line. This is another version of Johnny Lawrence in the Eagle Fang t-shirt that he wore in the series. He's got the bandana as well. So this is being released as a previews exclusive. It's gonna cost you about $30. It is available for pre-order at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. You could probably also pre-order this at your local comic book shop, and it is slated with a March of 2022 release. On the Transformers front, the only thing I have for you today is just a quick update on that HasLab Victory Saber project that's currently going on. So even though they haven't yet gotten to their minimal goal, uh, let alone the first unlockable goal, they went on and announced the second unlockable goal for this project, which is going to be a display base that you can use on the figures, either in robot or vehicle modes. It's done with translucent plastic. For, for, you, for them to include this one, they're going to have to get to 17,000 backers. Now, as I'm filming this, the project has still over 23 days left to it. And right now is it just over 8,000 backers. The minimum number of backers that the project needs in order for the Victory Saber itself to be funded is 11,000. And then to get to the first stretch goal, they need to get to 14,000 backers. And that was the big cannon and the blast effects. And then to get to for this display base, it'll need to get to 17,000. So um, it's been pretty slow going up until this point. But like, as always, I do suspect that as we get towards the end of the project, it will pick up. I, I, I still have a little doubt that it'll at least get to the 11,000. Whether it gets to 17,000 or more remains to be seen. There is at least one more unlockable goal, and I don't know when they'll actually reveal that one. Now, this figure is going to be on display this coming weekend at the Dallas Fan Expo. So if you live in Dallas and you're planning on going to that, you can check this thing out in person. It is still the unpainted uh, production sample pieces that they have. But again, it will be on display at the Dallas Fan Expo. Now for Star Wars, I just have a rumor report to share with you. It's in regards to Archive Black Series figures. So you may recall in the last live stream they did the other week, they they gave us the names of the, the characters that will be in the next wave. They didn't show us any images or anything, but they gave us the names. And those names were Emperor Palpatine from Return of the Jedi, Lando Calrissian in his Skiff Guard disguise from Return of the Jedi, as well as C-3PO from A New Hope, and then Dengar the Bounty Hunter from Empire Strikes Back. Now, I had actually seen that listing before Hasbro officially confirmed it. However, the one difference in the listing I had seen is that C-3PO was actually not listed for that wave, but in the second wave for 2022, 
I had actually seen a listing for Leia and her bounty hunter disguise as being in that first wave. So with the second wave, it looks like we're going to get some version of Han Solo and Chewbacca. I don't know exactly which one from which movie. I just have the names Han Solo and Chewbacca. So we'll have to wait and see exactly which version of those two characters we'll be getting. And then I'm assuming that Leia in her bounty hunter disguise will be in this wave since uh, obviously C-3PO is going to be in that first wave. So um, I am making a little bit of assumption there, switching the two, but but since everything else had checked out uh, based on what Hasbro told us for the first wave, other than the, the, the Leia and the C-3PO, I'm, I'm thinking those two just got switched. And then the final figure in the second wave for 2022 should be uh, uh, Governor Tarkin, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin will be getting uh, the archive treatment. So again, we'll treat all of this as rumor until Hasbro officially confirms it, but I do believe that will be the second wave of archive Black Series figures for 2022. Han Solo, Chewbacca, Leia and her bounty hunter disguise, and, and Governor Tarkin. Okay, let's finish things off today with some Marvel news. So first of all, on the Tomasi Nations front, we got those official images and details for the three Eternals figures that they're doing for the SH Figure Arts line. They'd previously teased these three figures. I don't know if they're gonna do any of the other Eternal characters, but at the very least, they're gonna be doing Icarus, Cersei, and Kingo. And with these new images, we get a look at not only the figures themselves, but the accessories that they will be coming with. So each figure is gonna come with an alternate head. With the Icarus figure, he's gonna have an alternate head uh, for his eye beam power effects. So you can have him shooting the eye beams out of his eyes, and you also get some effects just around, around the entire face with that one. Cersei is gonna have an alternate head that has the eyes that are kind of uh, glowing to mimic her power and ability. And to go along with that, she's gonna come with uh, a wood stick and then a version of the wood stick that has been turned to crystal. And then finally with Kingo, he is going to also come with an alternate head and then he's going to have a, a, a beam effect that he can shoot out of his hand. So uh, again, to mimic his powers. Now these figures are going to be released in October of this year. So they're going to be out fairly soon. As I'm filming this, they have not yet gone up for pre-order at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. I do believe they are currently available for pre-order on the Bandai Premium website but I, I would guess that places like Big Bad Toy Store will eventually carry these uh, along with uh, Bandai itself. Hot Toys this morning threw out this teaser image for a new Carnage figure, specifically based on the upcoming Venom Let There Be Carnage movie. So we don't have any other details other than this teaser image, but probably within the next week or so, we'll, we'll be seeing more on this. And I'll be sure to pass that information on to you guys when we do. And then finally for Marvel Legends, I have a, a rumor report for you, which I believe I, I've started to talk about previously, but now I have full details. So this has not been officially confirmed by Hasbro and we will treat it as rumor until they do officially confirm it. You know, things like these can change sometimes, but, but based on information and listings I've seen, uh, there's going to be definitely an X-Men wave for 2022, which is not terribly shocking. Uh, all comic book based figures, all random comic book based figures, meaning not based on any specific storyline like we have been seeing with the more recent X-Men waves. And then I believe I already told you that Siren was going to be in this wave. And I don't know what versions of any of these characters you know, we'll be getting um, you know, with Siren. I'm making an assumption that it'll be a green and, and yellow outfit or classic outfit, but I don't know that for sure. I've only seen the character names. I've not actually seen any of the figures. We are also getting the character Darwin, Havoc, which I would think would be his classic version. I guess maybe his most recent one, which is very similar to his classic version as possible. But um, I, I know a number of people had been wanting his classic version. So that's the assumption on that one. Then some version of Wolverine. I have absolutely no idea what version of Wolverine. Uh, a new Sabretooth figure should be in this wave. Again, I have no idea what version, maybe his original classic version. Maybe his more recent uh, House of X version, I don't know. But Saber 2 should be in the wave. Uh, another Summers brother should be in this wave with the character Vulcan. And then Maggot is the final regular release figure in this wave. Now I have no idea what the Build-A-Figure for this wave is going to be. I've not seen that information. As usual, we don't get the Build-A-Figures. I would think a character possibly like Random would, would be a good fit for this wave. 
uh, but I, that's just purely a guess on my part. So as I said, I don't know the build a figure, but that should be the seven uh, regular figures in this wave, which will be out in 2022. I don't know. I think it's possible Hasbro might reveal this wave next month during PulseCon, but we'll have to wait and see. And as I said, we will treat this as rumor until Hasbro officially confirms it. Okay, so that's it for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything I talked about down in the comments section below. Like the video if you're so inclined. And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. You should also hit that bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. As always, guys, stay safe out there. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit that bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, action figures are great.